Hello YouTube and welcome back. Uh, this is uh, part two in a series on using a free open source program called Darktable for photo editing um, on Mac OS X. Uh, well, I guess it's just Mac OS now with the uh, recent announcement. Um, still in version 204. Um, but today, I'm going to take a look at the Darkroom module. Uh, last time we went over the Light Table module, this time we're going to take a look at Darkroom. Um, I'm going to preface this by saying uh, my way of doing things is not like the correct or the canon way. It's just the uh, way I do things. There are a million different ways to accomplish the same thing in Lightroom. I mean, in Darktable on Lightroom too, um, and a lot of modules that to work towards the same goals. So uh, this workflow is mine. Uh, you can adapt it or use it if you want um, or not. Uh, again, uh, this is just some, some basic stuff. I'm not getting too deep into anything. Um, and you know, there are a million different ways to do things. So first thing I'm gonna do is kind of show you around the uh, dark table, uh, dark room module here. Uh, we have, uh, this is you know your photo viewing window. Down here is your film strip which gives you kind of a little bit of a preview of all the photos you have. Right now I just have the 12 or so that I have so that I have selected as uh, being five stars or higher. Um, <clears throat> over here you've got the tagging if you need to do that, color picker. Um, that's for, um, yeah, for use in some modules. History, uh, just like in other editing software, you can go back if you change something, you can revert your history. Um, revert to a different state. Darktable is non-destructive. It stores all of its edits in XMP files next to the raw file on your file system. So everything's completely undoable and, uh, you know, uh, repeatable and, and whatnot. So you can, you can totally, you know, don't have to worry about um, <clears throat> destroying your data. Um, this button here will allow you to create a style. So say if you create a particular look that you like, I don't really use this that much. Um, say you shoot a lot of the same style photo and you want to create a particular look or feel and use that and apply that to um, whatever photograph that you shoot, uh, you can create a new style here with this button. Uh, snapshots. Um, say you do a lot of editing and you want to save the photo. I'm going to zoom in here. And you want to save the photo in the state as it is now as like a point as a reference. You can take a snapshot of it um, so like you know we can click that and that just basically takes this step here and makes it a snapshot so now we can go back to the beginning if we need to um, minimize that minimize tagging here image information uh, as your typical exif data you can see the camera uh, the lens the film roll folder it lives in the copyright um, when it was taken and all that stuff. So this is just your <coughs> EXIF data. Uh, mask manager. Uh, every, a lot of modules in the light in the dark room are maskable, and you can create shapes um, and paths, drawn shapes, um, gradients, all that stuff. That's the word I was trying to think of to the fold to the image, and then you can deal with those shapes here. You can rearrange them. You can use the same shape for multiple modules. So that's what that's for. But um, let's see. So down here we can go, uh, this is, uh, these are some, uh, controls down here by the screen. Let's see, down here we have a couple of different things. Um, okay, so if you, if you have a style, you can create, you can click this button. Again, I don't use this, I'm not as, uh, down with, or familiar with it, but if you create a style, you can apply it from here. Um, if you have presets, I don't have any presets to find, so, you know, that's, uh, you know, you can quick access them there. This here is your under and overexposed warning. So we'll go here and look at this photograph, wait for it to come up here. Um, and you hit that and just like in any other editing software, you can see where the highlights are blown out, but the blown out highlights will show up in red. The, uh, underexposed shadows, if there are any, will show up in blue. Um, soft proofing. Uh, I just have my display. This is if you are going to send it to print or something. You can um, soft proof it for a particular profile and gamut checking. If you are uh, 
Um, this shows where your color information will be lost. Um, going from like Adobe or Pro RGB, this was shot in Adobe RBG or your Pro Photo RBG into sRGB. So that's, those are those are print things. You really don't need to know a lot about those unless you're printing. Uh, soft proofing, I'll use. Uh, I do print or used to. I need to get a new printer. Um, oops, sorry, my chair just popped. But uh, anyway, so I use that. Um, but I mostly use the highlight warning. So I'm going to go all the way back over here, our first photo. And we're going to go through and go through some modules here. Uh, Dark Table comes with some basic modules sort of uh, on this right-hand column enabled by default. This is your histogram here. Of course, you should be pretty familiar with that. Shadows. Uh, this is your... Oh, whoops. I was not meaning to do that. We'll go back here. Um, so, you know, you can scroll your wheel here and change your exposure on the histogram. This is your highlights. This is your uh, shadows and, and black points. So you can drag that up and down. If you drag your black point down here, you know, it kind of gives you more uh, more areas that are, are in deep shadow. So we can cut on our warning and you can see here that these areas that are blue now are now completely deep shadow. You're clipping, you're losing detail there. Um, you know, that's a contrast thing. I like it. I, I usually like to have some some deep dark blacks in my photo and some bright whites. You know, I like to have kind of a spread out curve up here um, to help with the uh, to help it pop. Uh, otherwise, you know, if it's flat with no curve, it it looks it looks bland. So uh, that's what that does. So again, you know, but otherwise it's just a histogram display and shows you where your data is. Uh, if you don't know about histograms, you can go check out some tutorials. But basically, this is highlights, and if your if your curve is popping off over here, you're clipping on the highlights, and if you're popping off over here, you're clipping on the shadows. Um, so we've got a few groups here. Um, this group here is the active modules. These are just the modules that are currently being used on this photo. So you've got a few by default base curve. Um, it automatically applies the D800 base curve, that setting, remember we set in the last video, <clears throat> automatically set on this, and uh, the mosaic, white balance, just your basic ones. Favorites, so you can set favorite modules, which I'll go through and show in a second, um, and they'll be listed here. This is, um, come on, this is your color stuff over here, color adjustments. This is your um, tone tone adjustment, so like your curves, your levels, your local contrast. Uh, this is your basic group, brightness and contrast, crop and rotate. Kind of, I call this group like what you would find in a smartphone editing app. Basically, you know, if, if just, the, just the bare basics, bare bones stuff, uh, orientation, exposure, white balance, the typical, the everyday typical um, things. Uh, and tone, this is your curve. Um, Similar but different, it's an LAB curve, which I really won't go into much here. Manual levels, uh, you actually get levels and, and, and curves in this, unlike Lightroom, which just gives you curves last time I checked. It may give you levels now, I haven't used version 6. Um, a local contrast, this is kind of like the clarity, uh, if you're familiar with that. Color group, you've got some stuff here. The monochrome one I use a bit. Um, the monochrome is actually kind of nice. I, I use it um, a lot in portraiture stuff. In fact, if I go to uh, see the default preset in here, let's see which one is it. Uh, yeah, that's one doesn't have them all for some reason. I guess I, I'm sorry, I don't have my custom presets on here. But you can go through here and adjust the uh, the color filter. So if you drag, if you put your if you put your uh, little circle here, I'm scrolling my mouse wheel in and out. Um, that increases the uh, this, the kind of breadth of the filter. So um, this is a very, like if you scroll all the way down, this is a very narrow green filter. So this would be the equivalent of like sticking a green filter on a lens on a black and white photo. Same thing with this, it would be like the equivalent of sticking a red, red uh, filter on a black and white film photo, yada, yada, yada. Um, these are uh, these are very handy, I'll, and I should go. I'll do a tutorial on doing black and white and dark table. But uh, it's one of my favorite aspects of the software is this module. But you can go through here and kind of mess with it to get the uh, 
the best look that you that you can. Um, and uh, again, I I, um, I tend to go for kind of a medium size filter because if you really narrow it out, it's going to block out too much and you get this kind of flat look. And if you make it too wide, it's not going to clip enough, <clears throat> and it really doesn't have any pop to it. So you, you gotta get you gotta get a good good mix there. So I'm gonna go back to the base curve, but I, that's topic for a different day. Input color profile, um, the enhanced color matrix is default. Works pretty well. You really don't have to worry about that unless you have some, uh, unless you're doing some color calibration, color correction. Uh, this is like split toning, so you can do this whole Instagram thing if that's your if that's your deal. It's actually quite good at that. I don't really do it much to be honest. Um, this is your highlights. This is your shadows. So when you drop your shadows in, you can see that the shadows are turning blue. When you drag your this guy over here, you can see that the highlights are turning uh, kind of red orange. Go ahead and cut this off so it's not so distracting. But uh, uh, again, I don't really use it that much because I'm not uh, um, a film simulation kind of a guy. But if you are, you need to play with that module. It's kind of nice. Um, sharpening, pretty self-explanatory. Lens correction, uh, you can come in here and, in fact, I'll go ahead and enable that. Um, and that will actually apply a lens correction by a database just like Lightroom, DxO Optics, <clears throat> every other piece of software out there, vignette, uh, graduated density, all those special effects things you're probably familiar with. Um, it doesn't come with many modules by default enabled, but we have a ton down here that we can mess with and, and enable. So I'm going to go through and click on a few and put them in my favorites and show you how that works. Right, I forget a little drink there. Um, it is kind of late at night. <laughs> morning so this is going to be kind of raw let me know if you like the tone of this i'm trying to go for a little bit less formal than some of the other ones this is more kind of just off the cuff um so chromatic aberrations if you click a module it enables it. if you click a module when it turns this light gray color that enables it if you click it again it puts a star next to it and it sticks it in your favorite so i usually like chromatic aberrations i'll, I'll use a lot color zones i'll go ahead and put in my favorites um Fringe, I'll enable, but I won't put that in the favorites. I don't use it that much. Denoise uh, profile, that's super, super good to have. I'm going to put that in my favorites. Equalizer, I use that quite a bit. I'll put that in my favorites. Um, hot pixels, I'll enable, but not in the favorites. Uh, in fact, I usually have that cut on by default. Uh, you know, I think my camera has a couple of stuck red pixels, so... I usually cut that on. Let's see. What else? So, I mean, the ones that are light gray color are already on. And all these I don't use and cut on. So, like, low light vision I don't do. Low pass I don't really use for anything. Raw denoise I could sometimes use. I'll cut that on. Um, split toning I don't really use. I'll cut leave that off. Spot removal I'll cut on. I use that occasionally. It's got a Velvia. Thing. I don't really use it. Uh, vibrance, I don't really use that much. Watermark, I don't ever use. Zone system, that's kind of a neat one. I can show that. But uh, I'll go ahead and add white balance to the favorites. Shadows and highlights to my favorites. Uh, monochrome, my favorites. I use that one more than I like to admit. Uh, lens correction to my favorites. And... Um, I think that is all that I really want to do. Let me come in here. Um, bloom, channel mixture, color zones. Where is my uh, tone curve? Tone curve, that's what I'm looking for. RST, uh, tone curve. Add that to my favorites, yeah. I think that's good. Um, vignette I'll put in there too, okay. So now I've populated my favorites with some of my more common, um, actually, let me do one more, brightness, contrast. Uh, where is that? Contrast, brightness, sorry. It's in alphabetical order, so you have to get it right. Bam, that's a favorite. Crop and rotate's a favorite. All right, cool deal. So now I have in my favorites kind of my go-to bunch of them. Um, color zones is neat, too. I can show that one. Um, perhaps in a future video, I might get to it on this one. But these are my favorite kind of most often used modules. And so I think of my favorite, so I'm not swapping back and forth between all of these different areas all the time. Um, works pretty well. 
you know, you can, you, there's nothing permanent about this. You can take things out of your favorites or add things back. So, um, yeah, that's how you add and remove modules. So I'm going to go ahead and get cracking here. Um, so we have this photo here. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty even. Uh, there's not really any clipped highlights to worry about. There's not really any sort of, uh, it's a good one to start with. There's not really a lot to do. Uh, I usually come up and bring the contrast up a little bit. And right, right, I'm mess with the white balance here. I didn't do a gray card on this shoot um, because I forgot. But um, we'll <laughs> never forget it happens to you. I, the way I kind of do white balance is I kind of try to look for a neutral looking palette. So I'm going to, my gut tells me to bring this down. Uh, you know, some people get all religious about color correction. I go with what looks good for this kind of stuff. If I'm doing print things, this is not going to be printed to my knowledge. So if I'm going for print things, I'll go for color accuracy. If I'm going for turning it over somebody digitally, I'll go for kind of looks good. My monitor is calibrated. And the monkey is happy. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, I just go for a neutral looking thing. I tend to lean cooler just because I like the blues more than the pinks. And the Nikon cameras tend to overemphasize the pinks. So uh, that's my, that is my kind of leaning. So... Uh, white balance we've got adjusted, lens correction we've got adjusted. Um, you know, I don't really need to crop and rotate. That's a pretty good framing for, for a headshot, I think. Uh, you know, we'll probably go in here and mess with the curve a little bit. So, you know, friends don't let friends not have an S curve, S shape curve. And we'll kind of, whoa, all right, we'll revert that. So if you ever, so if you're in here screwing around with the curve tool and you're like, uh-oh, I done goofed, just double click it and it'll pop back to the way it was. Again, these are your shadows, these are your highlights. So if you've never used a curve before, you just, this is bringing up the highlights and then this is this bringing this point down here on the curve is bringing down the, um, the shadows. So you can see the difference that's making when I bring this down, the shadows get darker. In fact, I can cut on the warning here and you can see, you know, bringing it down, we're getting dark shadows, bringing it up, we're getting, we're getting uh, blown out highlights. So. I think I'm going to leave that alone on this particular image. I might give it a little more contrast, though. A little less. Maybe a little bit more saturated. It looks a little, looks a little washed out, if you ask me. Again, I do a lot of things just by what looks good to the old hut and eye here. Um, equalizer. It's kind of neat, but I don't think we need it here. His skin is in pretty good shape. Uh, I use that for some smoothing, and we might do a little bit here. Uh, not to embarrass this poor fellow too much, but uh, what I'll do is I'll max this in. Now, here is the neat thing about Darktable. If you notice, most of these modules here have a blend option down here, right? Blend. So uh, what that does is it allows you to mask them. So if we go in here and we do Blend, Draw, and Mask, and we get the little pencil tool here, you get a little uh, pencil cursor. And I'm hitting, um, uh, ooh, I forgot to cut on Keycaster. Let me cut that bad boy on. All right, so. All right. Um, let's see, so I'm hitting, okay, now you can see it. I'm hitting the, uh, the, the left bracket here and uh, making the, uh, okay, no, wait, that's not what I wanted. Making the uh, brush smaller, and if you hit the big, the right bracket, it makes it bigger. So there we go. So I'm going to paint in a little here. He's got a little bit of a rough patch on the old face, like we all do. It'll happen to you eventually. So I'm just going to paint that in here. And without getting, I could do a whole video on the equalizer module. It's very powerful. Basically, it gives you access to the uh, frequency, uh, what is it, frequency deconvolution. Uh, basically, uh, how Lightroom or uh, Darktable, I keep calling it, it's, it's late, it's after midnight, give me a break. Auto Arc Table breaks down the images. Um, so this is fine detail over here. This is coarse detail over here. This is kind of a, a fine detail. So I'm going to pull this down. So you notice you've got smooth down here and contrasty up here. So if I were to pull this up towards the top here, it's going to, you can see what's happening to his face. It's accentuating that. We don't want that. It looks bad. Uh, I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel here to make this more of a fatter kind of grabber, fatter grabber, and bring that down. You can see how that just brings that out a little bit. Um, by bringing it to the smooth, we're just pulling those details down a little bit. It smooths out his skin just ever so slightly, but just where I've painted with that brush kind of sloppily. Um, and we can back out here. 
And, you know, it's, it's, it's a detail thing. I, you know, 90% of people won't notice it, but you don't want to, uh, you don't want to hand off a photo and have it, uh, have it look like that. So I'm going to keep pulling that down here a little bit. And I might, might put a little here on the nose and another one over here. And you can see our mask thing on the left hand side is kind of filling up. And then you can address the opacity. So, you know, that's a little much. I think I'm going to bring that down so it's not quite as, as, a, as a big of an effect. And, um, yeah, so that kind of made his skin not quite as porous uh, right, and, and looks a little better. Looks good to me. All right, so we've got this photo done. And you notice all of these photos here across the bottom are basically the same in the same lighting. Um, we can actually, we're not quite done. Sorry, I keep going back. Just, I'm, I'm being indecisive. Like I said, I hope, hope you guys like the tone of these videos. I'm trying to be just more natural with them. I don't want to be like all, you know, I don't want to be like all full, full, uh, you know, not being serious, but I don't want to be like all staunchy and like an official thing. This is just a YouTube video, like an official tutorial. So I'm going to have a little bit of a vignette here, just a kiss, just a little bit, uh, shape, you know, make some adjustments here. Until it looks good, uh, until it fits what you want. I, I like it to be subtle, very subtle. Okay, so that kind of brings your eye into the center. Um, I might bring the white balance down a little bit more. It's getting a little pink. Uh, actually, what you can do um, is you can go into here in the color zones. And this is something I use because the Nikon cameras and pink colors just uh, um, kind of get... They kind of get a little happy with it. I bring it down just a hair. I'm grabbing here, and again, just these, this is saturation. I'm just bringing down the pink saturation just a bit. And so now now he doesn't look quite quite as pink. And it looks looks better. Um, so anyway, crop and, crop and rotate, I'm fine with. Shadows and highlights, let's, let's, let's mess with that. Let's get some of those highlights down a little bit. Um, so again, this is... Your shadows, if you drag these up, you see how it's lightening up these shadowy areas. Uh, you don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, but actually, I, I don't want the shadows to come up really at all, so I'm going to drag that back down here. It's just the highlights I want down ever so slightly. And your white point adjustment kind of, um, it adjusts. Um, you can see as I'm moving the slider, watch the histogram. You can see as I move it this way, it's adjusting the white point down, actually, so that so that more data is clipped off, and if you drag it here, it adjusts the white point up so that less data is clipped off. Um, I like to get a little bit of a clip there, just to have a little bit of a pop, you know. Uh, highlights, illuminates, shadow defines, type nonsense. I want to have, want to have a little bit of a contrast of a difference in this image. Um, radius just changes the amount that it's masking, so like a smaller radius kind of gives you, uh, if, you have, if you're having trouble with haloing, um, which was not really in this image, you can adjust that. And compression kind of determines how much of the image um, uh, is affected. Uh, you know, if you, if you drag it down here, it's just, it's just the really dark and light areas that are affected. If you drag it over here, it's all of the image that's affected. So we'll, we'll, we'll kind of play with it here. Um, there we go. Not my most brilliant work ever. I'll probably bring down that saturation a little. Maybe bring a little more contrast into it. Not my greatest work ever, but uh, I'm sure it'll be adequate. Um, there we go. So, you know, we've got an edited photo. Now we'll go back out here into the light table module. And these four photos here basically look the same. So I'm going to copy uh, under history stack. You say copy all. Actually, can you hit copy? Um, it'll bring up a list of things that it that it's going to copy. Uh, and it's just the modules that are on. I don't want it to copy the equalizer module because I masked that in. And that's going to be in slightly different positions in each of these images. So I'll have to go in and redo that on each time. But the rest of the stuff can pretty much come right along. So I'm going to click OK. And that's all copied now. And I'm going to make these a little smaller, make these thumbnails a little smaller. I'm going to highlight, 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 I'm just holding down the control key there, and now I'm going to paste. And it's going to ask me again, and I'm going to say yes, I want to paste those things. Bam. Those edits have all been applied to those photos. Now, after you do this, you probably 
might have to go in and tweak a little bit because, you know, it's not all exactly 100% the same. Uh, but you can, it gives you a good starting point and it gets you a little bit, I might back off my concentrate, that con, yeah, it looks a little bit better. I think I went a little nuts with the contrast in hindsight. Sorry, when you're doing this on camera, it's a little nerve wracking, so I'm going to go back and bring that down. There we go, contrast, too much. Just a little bit. All right, a little bit goes a long way, so let's do that again. Copy, uh, equalizer, no. Bang, bang, bang. Paste, yes. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. And these have all updated. Now, like I said, I may want to go in here and do some fiddling. Crop, see how I'm not quite centered on this? I'm going to come in here and crop it a little bit. We've got plenty. Uh, I like to actually, let's change that to the original image. I like to keep everything kind of cropped the same. Guys, I like to use the rule of thirds one. So you get the rule of thirds guides here. I'll put his head in the upper third. All right, so kind of crop it in there a little bit. Come up. There, there you go. All right, bam. All right, that's a usable image. Um... Crop and rotate once again. Come through here, kind of do that. Again, I'm just showing you my editing process for a batch of images. And this is not the same editing process that I use, but this is a good starting point. Uh, same thing for this one. I'm going to come in here and do uh, crop and rotate. And I may not, I probably won't go in and do the equalizer on all of these. I really just did it as a demo. His skin's pretty good. Um, and, you know, this is going to be like a social media headshot. No one's going to be doing that. Oh, boy, that looks like I, I, I screwed the focus up on that one a little bit. Actually, I may go ahead and... Uh, that one may not make the grade. Let's see. D800 problems, right, guys? All right. Now we've come to a different photo, slightly different lighting. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and rate that one down to a 1 so if we drop it out of there. And we don't need three of basically the same... Uh, his eyes are a little bit better than that one. Uh, actually, I'm going to drop the first one there. Those two, I think, are the keepers. Um, let's see. Let's see now. Let me look at these here. Now we're going to make our second kind of pass through. The video is getting kind of long, so, uh, I may, I may break this up into two parts, but let's see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll lose that. We'll, we'll cut that one loose. Again, that one's okay. Uh, okay, now we're down to a few left here. All right. Uh, the crop on this can be a little tighter. There we go. This is what we call an environmental portrait, right? <laughs> um, shadows and highlights. Exposure is pretty good. Again, you know, you just like any other editing software suite, you can come in here. I bring the blacks up a little bit. Contrast, maybe just a little bit. White balance, let's bring that down. A little bit pink. All right, I guess I like a little blue. And we'll come back in here. I think I'm gonna bring those pinks down a little bit, thanks. Uh, there you go, yeah, that looks good. All right. I think, eh. Well, but what do I know? Uh, let's see now. How is the, yeah, the focus is great on that. All right, so sharpening. Oh, that's another thing I went to go over. Sharpening, amount. I usually put that up a little bit more in stock um, on the 800. You know, again, some people get all religious about their sharpening. I don't. Um, face curve, uh, shadows and highlights. Let's see. Got kind of some highlighty. Again, I don't want those shadows at all. Got some kind of bright highlighty areas, white point adjustment. Now we'll leave that be. Uh, there we go. So now we've got sort of a uh, might not bring it down even that far. All right. Let's check our warnings here. Yeah, we might need to bring those down a little bit more, just so we aren't blowing that out. I think it's probably the red channel there that we're losing. 
which is fine. There's a lot of red in this anyway. Um, <clears throat> I'm okay with that. Again, you know, there's no such thing as the perfect exposure. It's all up to interpretation of what you are trying to accomplish in the image. I might bring down the exposure a tad. There we go. All right. And it's just a lot of this back and forth. Getting things the way you want it. Um, vignette. Actually, I kind of want to try something. Let me go warm with this and see how it looks. Again, this is my thought process in, organ in, in editing. I kind of play with it. Actually, it looks a little better warmer, I think. It's not quite as... Uh, not quite as... I think, it, I think the camera guessed kind of uh, cool there on the cool side, which is <clears throat> untypical. Uh, let's see. And exposure is down. Now, uh, we could try a vignette. Here, kind of uh, a very slight vignette. Move it over. There we go. Center it up on him a little bit. There we go. I think that'll look pretty cool. Uh, that'll help draw your eye to him instead of whatever's over there. Gra graduated density here. Graduated density works a lot like it does in Lightroom. Um, it's a little much. I'm going to crank it down a little bit. So basically, this is just like a graduated density filter that you would use in the, ba in the old days on a film camera, just um, in the digital darkroom here. So it's just making this area here a little bit darker. Uh, again, to draw your eyes towards the subject, we don't want to be looking over here. I don't, this needs to be background decoration. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty good to me. It looks like a keeper. And again, now we have five or six that are all the same. And in fact, I'm pretty confident about my positioning here that I'm just going to copy the whole history stack, copy all, being brave, and paste all. Let's see what we get. I might have to come in there in just a little. Let's see. Yeah, more than a little. Let's see. Crop and rotate. All right. Where's the... Ah, all right. Yeah, a little bit less. Right on. Right on. All righty. All right. There we go. Adjust that. And for some reason, I think these were a bit bright. Um, uh, I hope these edits turn out okay. This is, might be one of those things where I come back and look at the morning. It, and usually I'm not doing it in front of a camera. So I may, uh, <laughs> I don't know, hopefully this video survives. I'm putting it off too long. Let's see. Bring down those highlights some. Actually, let's, what's the white point adjustment do for me there? Um... Not a lot. That's a little better, I think. Yeah. All right. So that's probably a pretty good one. Let's copy that all. I'm going to paste that on these. Again, it's about consistency. Like, I want these to look all about the same. All right, so there's five or six edited photos. Uh, we'll go and hit these up right fast. Uh, these were kind of just some more different looking ones here. I kind of like, uh, kind of like. Usually, you know, your your subject is the brightest thing in the image, and I kind of like the point here that it's he's not. Um, he's kind of the dark area, uh, but I'm going to bring down his exposure a little bit. Uh, he's giving me the stink eye there. I think I'll leave that one. Let's see, eh, that one's worse. Eh, it's not, maybe it's not as bad as I think. Eh, we'll keep it. We'll give it to him. He can do what he wants with it. Uh, good enough for me. There we go. But we'll bring that down just a little bit there. Uh, not that much. A little bit less. There we go. Um, now, let's see, contrast. Get up there a little bit. Now we can use the great graduated filter for the opposite effect. We can uh, darken this up a little bit here. So I just put that there. It's just going to darken this side of the image up a little. Not that much. We want to uh, 
want that to be a little less, a little bit more. How about in there? And yeah. Yeah, just fiddling with it. I'm just dragging the slider back and forth to get it where I want it. Something like that in there. Uh, this side of the face is still bright to me, so I'm going to show you a nice little feature of Darktable where you can actually duplicate a module. So I'm going to go here to the Exposure module, click on this icon here that looks like a square on top of a square, and it says Multiple Instances. So I'm going to create a new instance, which creates a second copy. And again, I'm going to go in here and draw and mask, select the pencil, and do this here, kind of paint in a little bit, you know, just a little bit right there on the face, and then I'm going to bring in down his exposure right there, just, just a little. You don't want it to be obvious. That's kind of obvious. We'll have to let him have a little bit more there. That's a little better. Okay, so now that brings it in just the hair out of the, uh, the highlight side of the things. Uh, we're still losing the red channel, but um, eh, I'm okay with that. Let's see, let me come in here, a little bit more saturation, a little bit less contrast, let's see, a little bit, a little bit less saturation, again, a little goes a long way, white balance, take a look at that, let's see what we got, again, let's we'll find a nice spot where it looks good, looks neutral, it's not obviously I don't like the, you know, artificial warm look. I, I think uh, that's overdone. Not a big fan of it. Let's see. That's a little bit more. Uh, mask blur. Okay, we're going to soften the edge of the mask here so it's not as obvious. So the more you blur the mask, uh, the softer the edge is, the less obvious it becomes. So, like, if I kind of show you an extreme example where we over-darken it here, if you make the mask blur less you wind up with this obvious spot on his face. If you make the mask blur more, uh, it's not as not as obvious. So it helps kind of hide it. In fact, I'm gonna come in here and kind of paint that in a little bit. There, all right, so. Yeah, yeah, that's looking all right. All right. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, it's a little much. Come on, there we go. All right, so now you can at least see that side of his face. It's still kind of bright. Um, you know, again, I, these aren't my best photos ever, but they're okay. Uh, crop and rotate. I want to get rid of that little thing there. We're going to crop that out. Let's see. Actually, let's try a different um, uh, aspect ratio for this. Let's try square. Right, there we go. Yeah, I like that. Again, I just went here and crop and rotate, and there are various aspect ratios available to you. Square, original image, um, this is a 3 by 2 so this would be, yeah, that one right there. As, you know, standard 35 millimeter DSLR, a 16 by 9 all these other film I don't know anything about. So, you know, square, kind of popular nowadays. That gets rid of this handle over here. Uh, I'm lazy. If I can crop something out instead of photoshopping it or gimping it out, I will do it that way. Um, that looks pretty good. You know, other than the stink eye thing. That can't be helped, though. Eh. I include a few bad ones to make my good ones look better, right? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That, that, no, I don't. I didn't mean to say that. Original image. Uh, let's see. That's pretty good there. This is a much better image, I think. Um contrast and whatever too much looks good white balance maybe give it a little bit of a warm-up <clears throat> a little bit goes a long way bring the uh, blacks up a little bit there all right vignette kind of uh get it where you want it Size, eh, size it down a little bit. You can use the sliders to position it or you can drag it around with your mouse like that. Either way works. Shape, uh, we'll, we'll make it a little bit narrower there and fall off strength. We'll make it a little weaker. 
again, very subtle. I don't like I don't like the like pinhole camera style vignettes. I, subtlety. Uh, that's my this name. <clears throat> it's the name of the game with me. So, <clears throat> subtlety. About as subtle as an atom bomb, really. Um, again, we'll probably bring the pinks down a little. Again, Nikon camera problems. Maybe not that much. There we go. Somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, that looks like a good photo. I'm happy with how it turned out. Um, so there we go. We have a set of edited photos ready to turn over to Mr. Booker here. Get a little bit of a coffee in me. It's after midnight I'm drinking coffee. I am <clears throat> insane. So here we go. We have all these edited um, <coughs> and ready to go. You notice when you edit them, you get this little symbol on them with the plus and minus and the yin yang looking thing here. That means that you've edited them, you've made adjustments to them, um, and they are they are all done. So uh, again, I might make one more pass here. Take a look at these. Let me try the white balance on these here. Make it a little warmer, not quite that warm. And see how I see if I like it better. And no, it's getting a little too a little too yellow. That's getting a little too cold. Uh, the other thing with these sliders, if you want to do fine adjustment, I'm right clicking here on this arrow. You can see this little triangle here, right? Where you where you slide with the slider. If you right click on it, it doesn't require you to have a two button mouse. You get this kind of fine adjustment. So you can see that the value is changing, but not as dramatically. And you can get this sort of little bit of a fine adjustment here. So I'm gonna do that. White balance is usually where I run into trouble because I'm just I get. I get in there and I, I can waste a lot of time. Uh, that looks pretty good though. And eh, maybe not. Copy. I'm going to go back. Select none. I just want the white balance. Bang. From that one to be applied. Hit this one. Paste. All right. So, okay. I'll call that happiness. Um, so we have the set of images, um, fairly quickly, you know, I was going through and explaining things and setting things up and it still only took probably about a half an hour to do if I wasn't talking and was just going through the images, you can raffle through these pretty fast and light and dark table here. <clears throat> Keep trying to call it light table because I'm looking at the light table module and dark table, light table, dark table, dark room. Oh, it's so confusing anyway, but, um, now we have our images. They're ready for delivery. They're ready to be shared put on Flickr, um, given to the client and what have you. But um, now we'll, we'll talk about that in the next video. I'm going to call this a wrap here for the dark room module. And uh, let me know if you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. But let me know why you didn't like it in the comment section. And constructive criticism, not just you suck and you know, smell bad or whatever. Um, if you like the style of this video, let me know. If you want something more formal, let me know. But uh, again, thanks for watching. Uh, my name is Leander, and I will see you in the next one.